Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. The state opposition was forced to make a parliamentary apology today over comments made by Labor MP Joanne Miller. The government mounted a sustained assault after Ms Miller compared fly-in, fly-out mining setups to Holocaust camps. Even before Parliament got underway, Mines Minister Andrew Cripps led the attack on the member for Bundamba. She doesn't understand the inappropriateness of her comments and that she doesn't understand why the community is concerned is the failure of the Leader of the Opposition to act. And inside the House, the government turned up the heat. The Leader of the Opposition needs to show leadership. Then it was the LNP's Deputy Leader, Jeff Seeney's turn. He said he respected the Palaszczuk name when the Labor leader's father was in politics, but not today. Henry Palaszczuk was a man of principle. He was, a, he was well respected. He was well respected in this House. But it appears question time was not long enough for the coalition, with members being recalled, the government demanding an apology of the opposition. But before a motion could be put, opposition leader Anastasia Palaszczuk stood before the parliament and apologised on behalf of her party. I have no problem with apologising for anyone who has taken offence. Miss Palaszczuk became emotional on the topic of her grandfather's time in a concentration camp. They were very, very tough days and I don't like recalling that history. There was no apology though from the MP at the centre of the drama. Edwina Seselja, QUT News. Queensland police say they're ready for anything the G20 summit can throw at them and they put their words into action today during a capability demonstration at Oxley. Their preparations have included crowd control, bomb disposal, SWAT assault and motorcade protocol. Some 4,600 police officers have undergone specialised training. We have demonstrated some of our capability here. You've seen the public safety response team, our special emergency response team, crowd management, dignitary protection and the motorcades. The police minister is adamant the QPS will be up to the task of ensuring a safe and successful summit. Now obviously you have uh, seen today uh, that uh, the police resources are able to meet any capacity or threat. The demonstrations took place at the QPS Academy with media crews looking on. The QPS took the opportunity to showcase their responses to various security threats which may arise during the G20 summit. The Assistant Commissioner says the specialised training will have a positive impact stretching beyond G20. So it's not only for G20, it's for the future of the QPS. It's always extraordinarily important to train and test our capabilities. Justin Brosnan, QUT News. And Brisbane will light up in spectacular fashion in the lead-up to the G20. An interactive lights display will run for 17 nights across city buildings to showcase the cultural celebrations. And Queenslanders can take part in choosing the colour of certain buildings. The, uh, major city buildings around the city like uh, Parliament House uh, and other major buildings in Brisbane City. Uh, it's a, a huge program and it's going to be a fantastic celebration uh, for Queensland and for the world. Thousands of international delegates are expected at the summit. The Prime Minister has admitted it's possible the cost of going to university could rise under the budget's deregulation of fees. He's publicly apologised for yesterday's winking gaffe. No cuts, no fees, no corporate university. The chant rang out across the country yesterday as students protested against the proposed cuts to education funding and deregulation of the sector. Today the Prime Minister said what the protesters were thinking. And I have no doubt that some universities will put uh, their fees up. But he says fees may fall in some cases and scholarships would remain a viable option for students. The opposition says it will push many people out of Australian universities. This budget hits low and middle income Australia. It is a vicious assault on Middle Australia, a vicious assault on the vulnerable in Australia. But despite the budget backlash, Mr Abbott says his position is safe. <laughs> I expect so. I, I think uh, the uh, Australian people are sick of governments which change their leaders mid-term. Jim Malo, QT News. The eating out culture of Fortitude Valley is booming. Funky new restaurants are popping up in Brisbane's latest dining precinct. The Valley focus is cultural fusion and quirky dining. 
The music hotspot now provides a variety of eating options for a new brand of patrons. I think that the Brisbane consumers become more savvy. They don't want to spend as much, but they really want excellent quality food, a fantastic place to dine. The trend has brought in some smart entrepreneurs. I think they're looking for an experience, that, a bit more adventurous experience, but still one that feels safe to them and is multicultural and is a lot more casual and fun. It's a different environment to that of the city, with cheaper meals and more accessible parking. Easy, convenient, easy parking, easy to get around. Uh, we serve as young families. You don't want to be taking your young kids into the city with all the traffic. You can stop over here. There's a, there's a great food offering all around. You can come and get desserts and coffee next door. And uh, it, it's great for the local, the local community. American-style dining is the Valley's latest craze. Restaurant owners say it's the fun international theme and casual dining experience that set the Valley apart. We are fresh and wholesome business. We are for the community. Um, we, don't, we do nothing fancy, it's just hot, fresh and succulent food with great people, friendly environments, coming into our home and having fun. And a large wings and a chicken, and a large chips and a chicken wings. Tegan West, QUT News. More than 300 boat exhibitors from around the world are showcasing their very best at Sanctuary Cove. The International Boat Show opened today. Little boats, big boats, jet skis and cars. The boat show has something for all enthusiasts and budgets. You can even take on a world record breaker. Andrew Abrahams completed the 5,000 kilometre Atlantic Challenge solo in January. Uh, I saw whales, dolphins, uh, I had a marlin follow the boat at one stage. I even saw in the middle of the Atlantic, a thousand miles from land, I saw a butterfly come past and I thought, where did that come from? Staging the show at this time of the year is the perfect time perspective for boaties. It's an opportunity for them to decide what they might purchase in time for summer. And the price range sits well with some customers. Yeah, some of the prices are good. You shop around and you get a good price, particularly at the show. Uh, here you get a good price going. Yeah, it sounds pretty reasonable for a boat, yeah. But others thought the prices were a bit steep. Not the greatest, I mean, a bit expensive compared to, compared to overseas and places like that. A bit expensive here. Alongside the boat, there's plenty of other entertainment, presentations, demonstrations and, of course, food. The show runs until Sunday. Jacinta Lal, QUT News. Good evening. Time to take a look at the weather. Today saw more showers scattered throughout the southeast. Brisbane again sat in the low 20s. The Sunshine Coast in Ipswich reached a maximum of 23 degrees. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney will be partly cloudy and 26 degrees. A few morning showers for Melbourne and Hobart with temperatures in the teens. Possible showers for Adelaide. And Darwin will be sunny with a max of 33. In Queensland tomorrow, we'll see showers right down the coast. Cairns and Townsville will reach a top of 27 a max of 26 in Rockhampton and Bundaberg, and a few showers and a chance of a storm in Longreach. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days. Chance of a late storm on Friday, but the weekend should be sunny with light winds and temps in the mid to high 20s, perfect. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.